hello students in this class we are deriving the relation between object distance image distance the refractive index of the medium where the object is there n1 and the refractive index of the medium where image is formed n2 and the radius of curvature of the spherical surface and this relation the equation we are deriving by refraction at spherical surface for that consider a spherical surface consider a spherical surface in that cb the center of curvature from pole to the center of curvature the distance r let n1 be the ri of rarer medium n2 be the ri of denser medium and we are considering an object point object on the principal axis let o be the point object on the principal axis its image i is also formed on the principal axis so we are considering the aperture of the spherical surface is so very small compared to the other distances other distances means the object distance image distance radius of curvature so compared to all these distances we consider the aperture of the spherical surface is very small so that we can make small angle approximation and also the nm the distance nm is considered as perpendicular to the principal axis from the point o the ray is incident at the point n now as it is entering into the other medium from rarer to denser it get refracted and the image i is formed in the denser medium to measure the angle of incidence and refraction we have to draw the normal now as the spherical surface is a part of a sphere from this point to center of curvature gives you the perpendicular so you have to join the line from n to c which gives you the normal to the surface so this is our angle of incidence i angle of refraction angle between refracted ray and normal to the surface is angle of refraction now if you take nm as perpendicular to the principal axis then you are going to get three right angle triangles n o m n i m and n m c these are the three right angle triangles you are going to get in this diagram and the angle n o m is taken as alpha n i m is taken as beta n c m is taken as gamma so refer to the diagram n o is m is alpha n i m is beta n c m is gamma now for small angle approximation already have told we are going to get three right angles and we are applying the tan function to all the right angle triangles to this angles so for tan alpha for small angle approximation tan theta is nearly equal to theta tan theta is nearly equal to theta so you can write tan alpha is equal to alpha now what is the value of tan alpha it is opposite upon base in this triangle n o m opposite upon base m n upon m o m n upon m o in a similar way tan beta is equal to beta what is the value for tan beta opposite upon base m n upon m i in the same way you can write the tan function for alpha gamma the so tan function for gamma is m n divided by m c m n divided by m c now 
in the triangle NOC, in the triangle N O C, in this triangle, in this triangle, I is the exterior angle N O M. I is the exterior angle, and you all know the exterior angle is equal to sum of opposite interior angles. So I is equal to alpha plus gamma. I is equal to alpha plus gamma. Substitute the value of alpha and gamma. M n by m o plus m n by m c. Let this be equation one. In the similar way, you can consider another right angle. Sorry, another triangle. N I C. So in this triangle, in this triangle. Gamma is the exterior angle, and the exterior angle gamma is equal to sum of interior angles, opposite interior angles. Now, which are opposite interior angles? R and beta. So, gamma is equal to R plus beta. Gamma is equal to R plus beta. Or you can rewrite the equation for R. So, R is equal to Gamma minus beta R is equal to substitute the value of gamma and beta M n by M c minus M n by M i. Let this be equation two. Now by Snell's law, n one sine i is equal to n two sine R. Again for small angle approximation, sine theta is nearly equal to theta. So instead of sine i, you can write i n one i is equal to n two R. Substitute the values of i and r, m n by m o plus m n by m c. If you substitute i value and r value, you are going to get this equation. Now, you have to simplify the equation. The m n from all the numerator will get cancelled. What remains? N one in the bracket one upon m o plus one upon m c and so on. After simplifying, you have to apply the sign convention. Sign convention means. M O M is the pole of the refracting surface. O is the object. From the pole of the refracting surface to the object is object distance U. From the pole of the refracting surface to the object is object distance U. As we are measuring, as the incident ray is towards. The right and our direction of measurement measurement is towards the left, opposite to that of the incident ray. So your object distance is taken as negative. Then, m i. It is the distance from pole of the refracting surface to the image. Is image distance? Look at the direction of the measurement. It is in the direction of the incident ray. So v is taken positive from The pole of the refracting surface M to the center of curvature is R, radius of curvature. Again, our direction of measurement is in the direction of the incident ray, so R is also taken negative. So we are substituting M O as minus U, M I as V, M C as R. After substituting, you are going to get N one by minus U. N one by R is equal to N two by R minus N two by V. When you rearrange the equations, you take R terms on one side. It will be and V U on one side. N two by V minus N one by U is equal to N two by R minus N one by R. When you take N two R common, it will be N two minus n1 so this is the equation for a spherical refracting surface which relates the object distance image distance the refractive indices of two media and the radius of curvature of the spherical surface the same equation we are going to use for refraction 
by lens because here we are considering refraction at one surface lens is having two surfaces so we are considering the refraction at two surfaces so we are applying this equation on two surfaces 